I think it. Okay, chat history. Yeah, it stays there. So it's good. Okay. okay, so recording this. So welcome to our meeting of the OSC effort. Now, uh, let's take a look at. So we want to look at. So so agenda would be Steam camps, and just kind of filling in where that's. You know, with the COVID crisis, the Steam camps are on hold, but we're planning for long term. Also, the thing I've been doing just for an update on your side here is really looking hard more more hard into the the material resilience part so I'm doing a lot of work on kind of re-examining where uh, as far as the supply chains go because um, yeah. I think that's that's a thing that is brought to a lot of people's attention as as the supply chains are disrupted right now so focus so kind of like getting back into making sure that uh, that work goes forward like for example on our wiki we actually have quite good documentation of like PLA production for example I was just looking at that um, things that are I think uh, a lot of a lot of things that are practical and trying to refocus around um, if you look at my log looking at the technology modules been trying to break down so there's 50 global village machines but there's gonna be about 500 modules that are common to entire like the entire technology set of civilization so mm -hmm. that's a different approach but I think it's consistent with w what we're doing in a way that you can get more people like if you can like for example look at the covid thing say there's 50 projects working on on respirators well uh they're kind of fragmented but what i th what i call for is well let's have the 50 projects work on modules of the ventilators such that all of them are working together and then you can make derivatives like the second toyota paradox style you do the prototyping of the parts and then applications come in rapidly at the end um, but you can do more you can have better products because you've developed at a lower level like at the module level making sure that the modules are more open source and more accessible and more usable so that once again the building block approach of Legos that's just um, kind of like the general theory of how I could see this uh, going forward quite a bit but let's uh, transition to the let's talk about steam camps so Andreas where are you at on on that yeah, um, so I got your critical path. I made one, like a yeah, first draft iteration. Mm -hmm. um, specific to that one as well with different... Basically, I, I made one block for one Steam camp, and then you can just copy-paste that block to get the different parts that you need, uh, more or less. Nice. Uh, Looks like mine. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, can you put an edit link in there? Let's see, is that under the edit link? Yeah, can you throw yeah, it on, on your um, Andreas critical path? I, yeah, if you could put an edit. Let's see, how are you doing that there? Mm -hmm. You're putting in... Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're embedding, but yeah, just put in an edit link. Um, yeah, talking about supply chains. So um, last time we talked about open source shredder. And um, mm -hmm. have you done the filament extrude as well? Because if you get both yeah. the filament extruder and the, the shredder, I think that would be very interesting. Yes, we have. Um, we have circular economy. Right. So take a look at this, this link here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of like low-hanging fruit. Um, you can see the stuff. That's a Lyman filament maker. Yeah. Wall mounted, works great. We just cranked out a bunch of, like you see the. Is it the one which is hanging and then it yeah. measures when it goes too low? Yep. Yeah. Very simple deal, uh, but as you see there, like uh, the next step, as in the 2018 simplified version, take the Lyman and then reduce all the complexity. So, so what you see in the upper graph. Let me share my screen. So if you look at the upper graph here, this one, this one here, that's taken, so take this, that's the Lyman that we built, and it's got this plastic case, and uh, cool, it's pretty cool, but it's also got some shortcomings, like because it's all plastic, 
if you get stuckage, I mean, you can crack. This thing can crack. So robustify it a little bit. This is two by four lumber, two by four lumber, steel plate. So it's steel and wood. And then it also has, this is in full CAD on the wiki. So you can download the CAD. But if you look at some of the details, there's better heat, like thermal design, like um, where the hot nozzle is on a metal plate. So this thing is like getting towards industrial grade, whereas the Lyman, it's like, it's all plastic. Um, mm. I think this this is a simplified and a uh, robustified version. I mean, simplified as in this thing here has got like 200 screws in it. This one has like 10 or 20. Uh, it's it's just details, but if you look at it, you, you can appreciate it if you study it in more detail, like the simplicity and the upgrade towards more industrial. So that's. Uh, this is cool stuff. Um, shredder comes with this. The, the, I don't think this is the block as much as the shredder is. So that's would a big, be, big deal. Yeah. Would it be possible to build both this one, the D3D Universal and the Shredder in one Steam camp? So yeah. Can yeah, definitely. The, I think the way we want to think about it Sorry, two conference calls going on. Um, yes, absolutely. So, so the idea there is for, I mean, if we do a nine day, absolutely. Like you could have in a nine day type of event. Can you still hear me? Yeah. In a nine day event, you can have the first four days. So once again, just to review the nine days, it's, uh, it's about um, still focusing on getting people ready to to be fully capable in prototyping. Now, yeah. the filament maker part, that makes sense for, <laughs> hey Jessica, um, filament maker part makes sense if it's a project in the last five days, yes, filament maker and shredder, do it, we could do it. So that's what I'm working on right now, pretty much trying to get that in gear. Like I've been building a bigger printer, the 12 inch bed printer, and then, um, I want to get the torch table up and running so we can cut shredder blades and then we can build a low cost shredder. Now the trick to a low cost shredder would be um, gear down that's off a very like a cheap motor like uh, either a drill motor or it turns out that what do you call it the treadmills turn out like I was looking at motors and what's the it turns out that a treadmill motor which costs 50 bucks is the most cost effective motor there's out there in the world like it costs 50 bucks for three horsepower or five horsepower that's like amazing but um you can also what i would do in a steam camp is is take a drill regular drill and use that as a drive because everyone has a drill and that could be a good starting version because a drill like if you have a good drill that thing can run continuously but you need to torque it down you need to gear it down so that's where the case for a 3d printed gear down comes in and that's where the filament maker comes in where you if you want to do large gear downs you're going to use it burn through a lot of plastic so but we're talking about heavy duty gear downs that are plastic and if you look at the wiki there's um i just want to point you out that plastic gears are not like a bad thing um, take a look at this article, the f which this is in one of these tech magazines. It says the future of gears is plastic. Why? Because they don't abrade. Mm. They uh, you can get hi pretty high performance plastic gearings. Let's see the future of gears. Gears. I just want to point that plastic gears are the future. Take a look at this article here. So plastic ain't no joke for transmission. So we could do 3D print your plastic gears on to connect it to a drill, a corded drill, like 500 watts. Now you can have a low cost gear down for a shredder and then the shredder is uh, half inch blades like I'm thinking. Currently the, the 
so precious plastics kind of leading the way on shredders they they still use quarter inch blades um, it's not re really gonna last so half inch is gonna be I think better and I would go with half inch because then you can go into heavier duty things like if you want to sh shred rubber you can do that with like half inch blades like talking about tires so I get a load of this I've been looking into what thermoplastic elastomers are and it turns out that a lot of the thermoplastic elastomers the rubbers like they use in tires and other things they're just blends they're not even they could be a thermoset rubber with a plastic so here's the deal take this is why I'm just explaining like the power of the shredder and that whole infrastructure so you take a shredder you shred tires that are in abundant supply and you mix it with any kind of a plastic literally any kind of a plastic and that blend it's like an alloy in metal it's not even reacting it's just blended and it provides the the favorable properties of rubber and plastic so for rubber it means it's pliable and for plastic it means means it's thermoplastic so you take standard thermosets and you convert them into thermoplastic elastomers so you have to have a shredder so you can end up with rubber powder I'm actually not sure how rubber powder is made, but I, I would tell you that definitely shredding the rubber tires would be the first step of that. Might be a ball mill for rubber powder, but rubber powder plus plastic like PLA or whatever. And you got these thermo thermoplastic elastomers. So, and thermoplastic elastomers, if they're hard, they're good for gearing, they're good for tracks on bulldozers and things. And so, uh, short story of it all, yes, uh, filament maker, shredder, in a nine day steam camp it makes perfect sense and that's uh that's the way to go so definitely want to do it and working on it all right um and have you built so you have built a um lehman filament extruder before yeah uh, do you know approximately how long time it takes to build it yeah if we would do it in a workshop two days but we don't want to do the lime and we want to do the the simplified version which is going to take one day so that's part of it like the lime with 200 screws itself and crazy amount of parts yeah you want to go more extreme on that manufacturing so simplify it and uh, do the simplified version which I haven't done but it's uh, I think it's a readily doable thing so I'll do this I'll build out finally this this thing here hmm. and uh, using a one inch screw like so the Lyman first of all is a half inch screw so start with like in a more industrial this this is one inch this is not half inch this is now one inch for the screw that's inside and okay. uh, since I got really good results on a half inch auger I'll just continue with the wood auger, just a bit, a drill bit, a wood drill bit off the shelf as opposed to making one where making one is a little more complicated. But you can see YouTube videos of how they make screws for extruders. That's a little beyond, but, but it's definitely doable readily with um, what we can do in the future. Like making our own screws, that would be a good thing. But for now, I think uh, like a one-inch auger would completely work. Yeah, so one day for that, for the shredder. Um, like if you have the five experimental days, you can definitely build and shred stuff, shred massive stuff. Uh, and the cost would be low because then <clears throat> you're getting the cost of the, the drive down to like low. I mean, like the gear down would cost you 150 bucks off the shelf, like one we used before, but you could do it for like $20 if you 3D print the gear down. So it's it's it could be done well within the five hundred dollar budget that we've had s to date with the steam camps for the materials including the printer so that's that'll be breakthrough i think nice. if we can uh it would require doing things like we cut our blades so that because the blades could get uh, expensive but not too expensive because cnc yeah. cutting isn't that bad yeah and uh, do you use any advanced type of uh, winder or just a uh, the Lyman winder works well right that's uh, a very simple one like the trigger on and off thing if you look at that page yeah. but that works well um, so 
and do you think we would be able to build that one also within the same within day? five days mm -hmm. yeah if we have five days you'd take um and once again simplify you see it how it looks there but simplify just a little bit it's kind of uh the way it is it's pretty ghetto <laughs> like those little mm. plastic parts there i mean they break like we've had the little coupler break in there so once again robustify and make it a little better um but yeah i'd say um a day per machine is doable if it's it would require now if we do just like all out like five day experiments by the end of the time we'd have it built and probably working now what could be interesting is if each of the camps maybe does or like if there's enough people at a camp that people break up and they do like um, one team does the shredder one team does the filament maker one team does the spooler mm. um. I guess it depends also how far away they are from each other. Because oh, yeah, so. they're really big, like aha moment if they can see, okay, well, they have the shredder, so they can shred things fast and we have the filament make it, so we can make filaments. Well, but I mean, right thing. now in practice for the first one, we're talking about probably remote, right? So, yeah. So um, that would be that. So we can say, okay, we'll get far in doing that, and then we could maybe even spread it out for more time. But before we do this, I would have this thing built up here and we could have a good model to work from and people can hack it if they want to make changes because if it's going to be a like a first prototype of that whole system, then you want to hack it and keep improving it. So it would be a good thing. But I mean, if we get a bunch of people signed up for this, that would be a pretty amazing thing. And then uh, talking about all this recycling stuff, I was looking into plastic quite a bit. You, if, if you trace my log, I was looking into thermoplastics and stuff from plastic elastomers. But yeah, like as in also thinking about how do you produce these things and the actual raw materials. And right now I'm into sweet potato PLA. <laughs> so you take you take the mm -hmm. starch, turn it to, to lactic acid, and then you turn it into polylactic acid. Look at the wiki for how that's done under PLA. It's actually, we've got a really good article on PLA by Eric, who uh, came to one of our uh, 3D printer builds, Eric Polliner. He's actually a biologist or like a lab guy, so he documented the whole process. It's really good. Uh, so that's definitely a good starting point. And all materials, all the materials are quite accessible. You can actually get a barrel of lactic acid, and you can work from that if you want to make polylactic acid with two chemicals. But it's it's one of those biological, like a bioreactor things, uh, kind of basics. Like if you know how to do yeah. biodiesel, you'll probably be able to do this. <clears throat> But very interesting. Like I, I got all pumped up about the PLA because it is actually accessible. Like people in our area could be making PLA instead of meth. It'd be great, great diversification. I uh, can't hear you. Speak up, Jessica. Put 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 down your thing. Good, you can hear me. Wasn't now. sure. I was just saying the biodiesel. That's an interesting overlap because there's a lot of kind of. Even urban, there's a lot of, uh, you know, they call them grease monkeys. They'll switch yeah, yeah. Your, your diesel to a biodiesel, and they're taking all the grease to the point where we own a diesel with the intent making it a biodiesel, but then no longer can we access any grease. <laughs> no, it's so true. They, like, those folks are around. That'd be interesting, too. To well, yeah, we've done biodiesel here, not. too, and we also ran on straight vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, the limiting step there is like you got to have oil you got that's uh you got to get mm -hmm. the oil uh, if you have that it's a pretty good deal yeah um i mean there's there's oil around if actually we got a friend who's got a donut shop and he's got like five gallons of oil every week so you know things like that that's it does work. good yeah. yeah you have access to that that's good mm -hmm. yeah you need we to haven't we haven't done it we actually oh. don't have don't have diesels right now but we do want to go to back to the changfa diesels to open source the engine like uh, the Changfa one, cylind one mm -hmm. cylinder diesel is what we want to go back to. We we've haven't done those, but we want to move beyond the Briggs and Stratton gasoline engines because uh, they're they just break too fast. So anyway, um, PLA. Sweet well, about this PLA. about this build thing about about doing the shredder extruder yeah. build. This is you're starting with a different shredder base than that one. Yeah. So take a look somewhere. at. Um, right? Was she, she, 
Oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Had <laughs> had wood wood gears actually of really hard wood. I thought that was interesting and strange. I've actually made something like that out of out of like blocks of plywood on a like a dado blade with a wide blade and just rotating the thing. Like there was a jig. So actually the whole it was like a column with these wood teeth, similar to what sh- the thing she had looking like. Not not that I think metal obviously is ideal. Trying to imagine cutting something up, but I just thought that was interesting. You know, the, out of wood, you could potentially do something. The gears might, rather than being individual shredder pieces, they could be like longer chunks. But, um, and then, yeah, the, both of these, you've already, there's already passes of both the filament yeah, maker yeah. and the take a look at, okay. you can 3D print the smaller shredder. Take a look at this one, for example. This is from the wiki, hidden on the wiki. Um, but if you take a look at my screen here, this one, which is not yeah, that was what I was thinking of, right? Recycle fail 3D print shredder. You can do a shredder out of plastic too. That kind of works if you have small pieces. But if you want to grind like larger things, not really. Uh-huh. Right. So, I mean, this, you know, for grinding down prints, if they're like small prints yeah you could probably chop it up with this thing but it's got plastic blades so yeah um, yeah well it's this thing here's the blades on if you look at my screen these blades here that's how they look mm-hmm. so we can do something like that do this but but just do this right and, and i think there's a way to do that better i mean you know not having to have the interior that hard to cut out um, oh yeah yeah, being yeah. Able just to do, do that uh, more like block like but again yes. i agree that wood doesn't make the most sense metal would make more sense and could end up being cheap in the end right so we've used hex shaft so yeah get rid of this star make that into a right. hex shaft which it slips right on you don't have to use any like set screws or any fastening it's just mm-hmm. on a hex shaft one inch mm-hmm. but do mm-hmm. it like i don't know if you've seen uh, precious plastic lately but they've got the the latest version of precious plastic they have the two if you do the uh, where is it? Precious plastic solutions machines. If you look at their Pro Shredder, this thing, they've got uh, two. Wow. Yeah, they've got the That's two. Cool. They've got the not one blade, but yeah, two blades against each other. Mm-hmm. Um, is that thing open source? Yeah, wow. yeah, it's open source. It's that's what we, that's the that's newer trying. version of what we want to okay. do. They're cool. a little pricey on that. They're like mm-hmm. two thousand euros. Mm. Um, <laughs> so for to do it for two hundred dollars is more <laughs> challenging. But right. you take so the idea there is so that's a Good. big motor, but you can use a a drill, which has got five hundred mm-hmm. watts. This might have like two kilowatts. A drill might have like five hundred watts to a kilowatt. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a free thing. So we'd say, okay, bring your own drill, and then uh, for the gear down, 3D printed, mm-hmm. and that way you're mm-hmm. so you're reducing like a bunch of money right there. And then yeah, um, hundred bucks probably. Yeah, it's probably two hundred dollars, right? I mean, you said fifty for the gear down and the motor. Say a good drill is a hundred bucks, but I don't know. Yeah, if people have that, that's mm-hmm. a cost mm-hmm. you don't have to have, and here. Um, I mean, you could use heavy wood to for the sides because that's uh, here. I think that's all metal. But you could use heavy mm-hmm. wood, and then maybe metal ends, but heavy wood, like two by ten. And I mm-hmm. do it out of a, a the chamber here out of wood for low cost, and then but you got the sh- metal blades and one inch hex shaft which is plenty for just like regular plastic shredding, but not for shredding tires or anything like that. Um, yeah. So don't tires usually have uh, wire yeah. fed through it also. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So mm-hmm. you'd have to have a magnet and take that wire Suck out after out. you shred yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Take be that interesting. Out I'm, I'm thinking it'd be worth, well, I don't know if it'd be worth it or not, but they're using a lot of recycled shredded rubbers and, in playgrounds you know oh, yeah. they 
you can sometimes even just direct tires, which are kind of gross because it ends up smelling bad and off gassing forever. But um, yeah, that's I yeah. Mean, rubber rubber really, crumb is a valuable product. Yeah, that would it'd be, be interesting. And as I said, a filler like you can make filament or basically thermoplastic filament by just mixing that if you powderize it powder with just plastic yeah so yeah. Um, so basically doing this but not 2,000 euros but $200 and mm. I think that's doable you got nice like when in terms of this the next team like the idea end of this month really it's all going to be online idea right so I guess I guess it's just I mean I thought with the last one, I, one of the parts I sort of missed or wish would have been worked better, obviously there were a lot of factors, was was having a kind of a constant uh, video stream or something, being able to see what people are working on and doing and coordinate that way. It was sort of broken by like comments through Slack and like a little bit of shared video time, but not everybody always accessing it. I think and maybe we zones. just have, right, time zones. Um, but setting that up where you're saying there's certain period of overlap that everybody's on there or yeah. in this those scenario, maybe those are like we're yeah, going maybe. through like Andreas is working mm -hmm. on us. We're kind of working on us. But yeah, like all those details, we need to nail that, nail those details. And uh, we don't have a date for the next camp. But we, I mean, we're not ready for it yet. And to right. yeah. do that. So I to, what I was going to say is maybe the meantime, we try to, we do try to build like, I guess a, you know, like you're do you're trying to build that thing. Right. I would be happy. It'd be interested to try to build one. Maybe we have sort of a, you know, the prep is a build session where we start testing all the kind Absolutely. of protocol that we're so, saying would work. So one thing you can do, like, uh, can you print stuff? Your printer's working. Yeah. I need to rebuild the X axis, but almost <laughs> well i mean you can prototype the gear down uh it's mm -hmm. going to take some time like i've got like yeah i mean i tried printing gears on that study on the the cad the test right and yep. i used a gear as part of looked at you know making gears with free cad and use that as part as this edge if you can see it yeah this upper edge is actually a gear this file got so big because it was a boolean between two objects, but I used a gear edge to make it. And obviously the problem is getting like clean, nice gears, not having it all sort of mushed together, getting the print to come out properly. Right, but we're talking about larger. Like, challenge I'm still having, yeah. For this shredder, you're better. talking about gears that are like six inch diameter or like three inch diameter, oh, so. Okay, that'd be better. So yeah. In fact, like if you build a larger gear, like you got to print it in parts because it's going to be huge. So 1.2 nozzles, huge mm -hmm. gears, they, they got to be big. I mean, that's basically plastic is 10 times weaker than steel. So you got to make them much bigger. That makes sense. Um, yes, Kel. So uh, you said like you're, we're missing some kind of live stream um, or a more like coherent collaboration between well, the teams um yeah. is it mainly regarding different time zones or is it okay um i can feed back what, on what that i mean one thing is jitsi me does not allow more than 12 people so the first thing is in a bigger picture we need to set up vi jitsi video bridge which which has selective forwarding and you can have thousands of people on it at the same time with only like the speakers appearing uh th what we're using right now is not get you 12 people so that's a first start so if we ever talk about any realistic way to do collaboration we can't use what we're using right now that's a that's a start we need to up that infrastructure mm -hmm. right now zoom has a capacity for a hundred people uh, so that's like that but for the incentive challenge and I think we should be gearing up for the uh, as far as the steam camps themselves mm -hmm. I mean if you have 12 locations and 12 people you're gonna need um, yeah. If you have and if you have remote participation we need to do that so th that just mm. needs to happen mm. so i started that discussion with our web people about we got to install jitsi video bridge that seems to be a working solution like i, I was reading their stuff and they say mm -hmm. it's, it seems like that's that's like the best thing or whatever else i don't know what else exists um outside of zoom and jitsi video bridge but we need some kind of a very well uh -huh. say it again 
Yeah, and WebEx, they can have conferences with quite a lot of people, and that's normally not the issue. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's something you can install on your own servers, but it's um, something you buy uh, from them. WebEx, yeah. I think yeah. you have to have an account, right? I've definitely yeah. used it with offices a bit. And it works fairly well internationally. We use that. We What's the limit on the number of people there? Sure. I don't know. If there, I mean, I assume there is some limit, but I've I been think in... like Zoom, like this, exactly free for a few people. But once it's, Zoom is the same way, <clears throat> I think I'm not even sure you get 100 people with Zoom until you have an account. I think you can have 40, but then if you pay for an account, yeah. you can have over 100. But if you look at that, I mean, I'm not seeing it. It'd be it's... worth it, though, for OSC to do it, potentially. Uh, not know. scalable, though. So here you got no, 30 bucks per... Oh, yeah. Well, look at just look at the costs. This is mm -hmm. so. First of all, it's up to two hundred per participants. Um, I'm giving you storage. And each participant cloud. is thirty bucks, so six thousand dollars a month. <laughs> later. <laughs> no, later. Oh I my mean, god! No. Uh, we gotta install it, and it's then we can manage it. A dedicated server that can handle it was gonna cost like thirty bucks a month. So they do. I think they have uh, so you can buy only for an event as well. Uh, yeah, WebEx events. Um, so in that case, because these prices are if each person has one account yeah. and each person can invite people from, from outside. So it's probably different prices if we talk for one-off uh, okay. events. Um, Let's see. I mean, they don't show it in their plans. Let's see. Let's see. Events and training, yeah. that, that one? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. WebEx yes. events and training. Yeah, you can contact sales. Up to 3,000 attendees. There you go. Uh, with 1,000 on video. Hmm. So that should Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah um, e let's find out maybe if what the costs there are. Or, uh, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I want to go for the long term. We got to install our thing. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, Jitsi, Jitsi Video Bridge is open source. So. Mm -hmm should be able to do it like I want to see that up in like the next couple of months and um, yeah yeah that'll be good we got it we got to do it because uh, yeah. it's all like softwares that are offering this are going to be experiencing like an explosion right now <laughs> so that's also going to be it's kind of an interesting opportunity to push the open source aspect um, in that context of online conferencing because everybody's yeah. having to do this for everything yeah related yeah, yeah. related to that and related to the osc platform software you know uh, question about like his voco screen right yeah that's the one um with the file type that you get are you able to just then upload it everywhere i was looking for a way that i can record you know, a presentation and a screen of me talking at the same time. It looks like this would do it, but then I noticed just the file type is some. It's like MK. No, go to OBS. You in trouble with that? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you can change it in the thing. Okay. Go to OBS Studio. As far as now, Voco Screen we did use it, but no, that's kind of like disused because OBS Studio works like I think way better. Studio. You know, okay. OBS I'll Studio. Look I'll look. Open I broadcaster just software. It's much more powerful. You can do like webcasts and all kinds of stuff with okay. it. So yeah, switch to that. That's that's in the next OSE Linux coming out next month. So that should be much better. Yeah. I guess. Well, th so there's a different one coming out next month. That I had another. And Blender seems a little bit weird on this version as yeah. well. It just has got some glitches in it. I don't know, like my blender has been working, but uh, let's go back to the, so Andreas with the lesson, so you're talking about getting high quality mm -hmm. lessons going, uh, Andreas, you want to take it away? Yeah, um, so I've done a couple of things, let me send it into the chat, um, where we list, try to list the different lessons that you have for the different days. So do you have any other information that you used in the January events, except what I can find on the wiki? Or is this the most up to, to date? Uh, maybe we can go through, maybe not now, okay, but yeah. like when you have time, uh, go through and see if, if it makes sense. Um, and also so we later on can 
move forward and break it down into different modules. Yeah, uh, so and then have one mo module be be one lesson, and then we we'll put the modules into different. Packages. Yeah, that's that's a good question. So, um, so one question is when I was were looking at these different modules is, I think it said there was a link to 3D printer. Um, D3D is simple. And we're building D3D universal, universal right? Now. Universal, yeah. D3D um, is simple, or it's D3D is simple that we're building. Universal. So take a look at this page I, I just can't hear you in. anymore. Oh, really? Sorry about um, that. So D3D universal is it. Uh, take a look at the link I just put in. So that's the latest that we have for the curriculum. Yeah, can so Steam day, Camp 9 day curriculum. So there's the four day based on learnings from January. So that's what we have. And then if yeah. you scroll down, that was like a proposal for two day from Jessica. And in this, it says D3D simple, though. Uh, it says D3D simple? Yeah, in the schedule, in day one. But then it's only, then it should be, because I got a little bit confused. Uh, oh. Can I just be, I mean, isn't D3D Universal oh, the sorry, name of? It's, no, that's outdated. We got to change it. Simple was the okay. model without the other heads. So Universal is the one that's, yeah, so let's change that right there on day one. But that's, see, that day one thing that you're seeing there, that's from January. The updated, okay, let's get oriented so we're on the same page. Let me just change that to universal there, D3D. Oh, the same thing. Universal. See, that January, what you're seeing as the four-day, like with the, with the light green check marks, that's from back from January. Uh, so maybe I'll put that... Um, I'll make a note of that, and this is okay. Um, all right. So talking about having some kind of version control. Yeah. Um, so may maybe this this schedule which I've tried to put down it comes from January. Are there any other big difference the first four days? from between the January and the March events? Well, the four-day curriculum, that's like if you click on that March 2020 STEAM Camp curriculum, Yeah. this one, that's that's what we did. That was the last one. OK, so, well, then it be correct. Um, yeah. And then, so I reviewed the paper you wrote regarding what's needed for the lessons, uh, and also looked at some YouTube videos for templates and transcluding web pages in media yeah. wiki uh, and so on the second page in this steam camp meeting documents i've written a little bit ideas of maybe one of the negative parts with wiki pages at least for me is that it's quite hard to get uh, like automatic uh, data like pulling data from how it's going uh, and getting it the way that you can do for example with Google Sheets. Um, and also, I think that when Sivash was looking at Boom, he couldn't really find the version control. Uh, so my suggestion is if we, we first break down all of these different things into modules, modules the way it is, and then we use, I made a template preliminary uh, called template colon lesson. Um, mm -hmm. And then if we pull that template for each of the different yeah lessons more or less we have the same structure yeah uh, where's that template so template lesson let's, let's write it template lesson the lesson template to the right on the course schedule it's in that same OSC template Steam Camp lesson, lesson plan link. is that what you're talking about yeah i can send the link yeah okay that's a start um, yep. Yeah. OSC required reading. That's an old thing. Let's see, is any of that still any good? Crash course on OSC. 
last updated May 2018. Global Village Construction said that should be good. I actually updated that a little bit. If you want to look at end state, I, I just added that. Read that. That's pretty funky. Um, okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that I just updated. Um, right. So, I mean, we can change it, of course. Yeah. But it's, 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 so it's you guys are looking at the Latin template right now? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be good if we also modularize the Wikipedia. So when we do, for example, a D3D universal lesson that we pull, we have templates for each of the different parts of what we're doing. So mm -hmm. for example, if, if we're doing a D3D universal lesson, then we're using the template of the lesson so we get the kind of structure. Um, I haven't tried to do this multi-level, but I assume it's possible. And then we pull the different parts. So we have one wiki page where we have the D3D universal 3D files, uh, another page where we have the D3D universal BOOM files. Uh, and then when it comes to version control, it would be quite nice to have like a version control test on each sub page. So we can see that we're always up to date with what we're using. Um, so what we can do, for example, is to write, add a little version control code in each of the uh, templates that we don't include when we transclude the page. So when we're in the template page, it will say which the newest version is of that thing. So for example, if we're building a D3D universal uh, lesson plan mm. and we're using the boom from version 2, but we're using the 3D files from version 3, uh, then we would be able to see that the version control says that the newest version is version 3, but uh, the template that we're using is version 2. Um, that one I think that would be useful to have that be clear. Very yeah. Well, how does this play with version control that's already on the wiki? So how would it solve with the old documents you mean? Or? So there's view history, right? So you have the whole history. And OK, so here's how I approach the problem of new versions. So brief history, 2009 or so, the wiki started. It went great for like a year or two, and then it just collapsed. So what happened there was you, new versions came up, and people started mixing versions. So the new approach that we use right now is the dev template where anytime you create something new, you create a new version. That's it. So for example, I just started D3D v20.04, uh, which I'm working on right now. And that means I can carry over like a development template by using the development template template. Um, I carry forward any information that's new. Like you literally have to What's a f so look at software. So software does a mm -hmm. git clone, right? What happens in git clone? You copy everything. So we're simulating that. So when I start D3D v20.04, you notice that I actually haven't copied everything. But say I need like a, I start actually a new part library. But the proper thing to do would be to like copy the old part library and update that here with whatever is new. But you have to basically copy everything so that you don't have, oh, now look back to ver this other version mm -hmm. for for the BOM. No, it has to be self-contained. So you have to include all that. So for example, the way we could address that here, I could go and put in um, dev temp, like if you see my screen, I could do this, yeah. dev template. Mm -hmm. your screen. I think oh. I think the, the point this point though, March, if you do that step by step, like how you do the new version, and then that's like, you know, this is the this is the method. It would help. Well, not so not only it'd be it point out when it hasn't been done properly, but it also would just make clear for people how they how they do that. Is that already? It's probably it's probably already documented. It's implicitly somewhere. being done, but uh, right. like you have to read the. Uh, there's a page on the wiki called versioning. Versioning. Wiki ver um, or so. it's under the um, 
Okay, so we have the OSC development protocol, right, page. On it, it actually has that. It's in this one, in this document here. It says Wiki Taxonomy. Oh, right. And mm -hmm. let's see, I think under Wiki Taxonomy, it talks about versioning. Look at versioning, number four. This is what we do right now. I did look through here, actually previously but yeah that's, that's so the version. Oh, okay. this models and maybe this is we, i mean we should uh, this is like all work in progress obviously but but mm -hmm. if you model the git clone concept what that means is that whenever you start a new thing so under wiki taxonomy is versioning so say i started 2004 the only thing i can do is copy everything from the last project that's git clone now, implicitly, I'm doing that because I know that I know that the last version that was documented was like um, 1911, let's say. And then if like the BOM is missing here, I go to go back to the other one. But see what I should really do here to be more formal. And I just started this. I would do dev template D3D V20.04. And click save and no that didn't that didn't work how did I do that properly dev template oh I think it's one equals or uh, zero equals so there there it goes and when I start d3d v2004 I should just this is like the formal organization just in 20 steps now we also have the 40 step version too but here we should be mm -hmm. able to to click on like if you want the BOM like okay it's red so there's nothing there if I click on it but here what I should do is just copy the D3 DV 1911 bomb and that way I have this filled in so it's kind of a manual thing but it's important to do that because now like if I change if I go into here D3 DV 2004 bomb I don't actually copy that spreadsheet here. I make a new version of that spreadsheet and copy it here. Because otherwise I, I would be changing the version 1911 BOM. Yeah. So that kind of process, it's, this is what we're implicitly doing, but nobody knows about that uh, mm -hmm. outside of myself pretty much, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's, right. that's how it should be done. <laughs> So we base the principle is this: you carry over everything from the last version, but whatever assets there are, you make sure those are copies, so you're not changing the old version. Period. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now this applies to how sense. we do development process. Now how does it apply to how we do the the tracking, the versioning of the Steam Camps stuff? My mm -hmm. view on that would be you just start the curriculum. And you do it like if the curriculum is you for one you have the version view history right like say you started this curriculum you have a history so you can go through that as the basic level of versioning but then once the curriculum changes we should call it like new steam camp curriculum or like the v 20.05 next month and keep everything from the last versions. We should always like, when we carry forward, we need to copy everything from the, the last one without messing up the last one. So, I don't know. Uh, now you mm -hmm. can go to, we can go to GitHub and, and do everything there, but now you don't have the ability to do all the things that the wiki has. So you can combine GitHub and this. So for example, you can mm -hmm. on GitHub, like you do Git clones on GitHub and you can actually, some people from the January Steam Camp said that, oh, well just, copy this code that's in here like when you click edit you know just copy all this into github and then track it through github well i don't know if that's mm. any better yeah. um it's it's all confusing but but the basic wonder, principle is you gotta like carry forth the new version and copy everything to it that's the only way you can mm -hmm. keep track of it otherwise you keep m mixing versions up because mm. that part like mixing versions up which which worries me a little bit um and also to have a way where people can be a bit messy, but still um, have it work in the end. Uh, well, that, that, al 
both of the things that you happened already exist. It's already messy and there's already some organization <laughs> happening, right? So what's happening is that, yeah, let it be messy, but people who are in the know, like myself, I can actually track all the projects because I know there's, well, first you start with D3D genealogy, right? So so if you go to, like under w versioning, it'll tell you about it's genealogy. About and there you can see all the, like for example, for the, Oh. 3D printer. So what if we had this? What if you had that? What if you had the genealogy like for all those different projects on the left somehow? I wonder if yeah. it's just, you know, like if we had links on the left side of the screen, how it's like main yeah. page, website, blah, blah, blah. But some of these specific yeah. ones, like the genealogy for those projects, uh, mm. and like the genealogy for the Steam Camp, maybe we yeah. have some separate links so it just gets people to the right place. What and then obviously we need, everybody needs to have we need to understand just what you described about how you don't change well, the previous version. But at least that way, I think it'd help people make sure they know that they're at the right like genealogical location of the project. Wikipedia because it does, does I agree, that. it's like when you're looking through there, it's hard to tell. Okay, Wikipedia does that by what's known as info boxes. So what, what uh, I think I mentioned somewhere was that an info box which say you use this D3D V V twenty four, use an info box that tells you the higher level organization. Like this is the part of this genealogy, this is part of the GVCS, this is these are other open source hardware projects even that are working on this and stuff like that. So so we this is just a call for an info box template that adds additional information that can be invoked either directly within the dev template or it's a template that you put in here just separately. So Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I click edit here and there's like the dev template thing, um, I want to actually show you one thing. So he here you can't edit this dev template. You see that? B there's a very useful thing. So if you look at a page called wiki templates on the wiki, it explains how to make it make the actual editable text show up. I don't know if you've seen this, Andreas, because you're studying this, but um, there's this templates and media wiki um look at this point number three i just fig figured this out the other day so for templates and me media wiki those are the three things you have to know uh, i think the third point is actually quite important and understand the difference between using a template and substituting in a template using the subst thing um, mm. So, if I do, so let me show you an example of this. So if I copy that, and I use that on uh, on this here. So if I do subst dev template, look what happens. I save it, and look what happens when I edit. It's in here now. I can edit it. So it actually substituted this template mm. for editability as opposed to just invoking it with one line. So now you can actually change the, the this, the contents here, without changing the original template. Um, that's a little trick. I, it's it's getting sophisticated here, but it's I think that part is really important. Uh, I mean, templates, we got to master templates, but you can do like with just one liners, you can invoke just like whole wads of content and complete organization like info box and whatever. So yeah, we w I think we want to do the definitely like f for the lessons, like do an info box probably. And then do a like Andreas, you already did. You got the template for the lessons. And that's a good start. I mean, we can do more formatting. The first thing is to make sure all the content is in there. So template lesson. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's all. Uh, if we have like. Here it's like a wall of text and stuff, but if you have this HTML, CSS stuff, you can make it extreme, look really beautiful. Like, let me show you a, a, a site that has really good templates. That's a media wiki, adsiv.org, I think, just to show you what it could look like. Look at this. This is the same, same wiki. That, 
this is they format this like this this is a uh, adsiv.org but like say on our lesson like compare this to our wall of text and you can do all of that like so here's our lesson but I mean you can format it in beautiful ways that's the point of the wiki like once we get the templates all worked out like this how we want to present each lesson then we could make it beautiful but right now we're just uh, getting the proper content in there so it's a it's a task to, to make it beautiful uh, presentable and marketable actually I mean, you can do a ton on top of this, but the first thing is, of course, the words and the, the database that we're seeding, and then you can format on top of it. Anyway. Do you know what happens if you edit the templates, which you did with Substitute, and then you update the uh, base or like the source templates? Yeah, I don't think it's going to change anything here. So here, the subst allowed me to edit it here. When I edit it here, it doesn't change the source template. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you change the source template, this would not happen. This would not change in any way simply because it's been substituted already. It's already in here. Yeah, OK. Yeah. So we need to be a little bit careful when we substitute in that case if we want to be able to change things uh, right. down. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Stream. You're gonna have to get the orientation of whether you substituted a template or just used the template. So I guess that's the terminolo terminology. Um, but yeah, I mean the templates are really powerful, and it's like, yeah. see, because before I did this using an embedded Google Doc, but that took like I have to go to Google, make the document, name it, um, then like half the time is spent exporting that into HTML and then embedding it here it's like five seconds versus like two minutes to start a new project readily I, I think it's really useful like if we get really skilled at it we can start basically like this page and then we have a nice info box that orients you to where everything is maybe have another thing for how you actually edit the wiki and stuff like that but th that's part of the infrastructure we need to be building up to uh, mm. get this massive collaborative literacy happening but that's where like if you saw on the uh, X page like this this other the other templates like like this stuff where we do this kind of stuff yeah I think that's cool the 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 windowed you know linkable different content that's pretty cool stuff too I think hmm, you can't see it as well like, how, do you know if you have been able to see it before what do you mean like the, the last two uh, out of the five oh yeah parts. I saw them before they were there hmm. before uh, you must uh, move them or something, or ch okay. we'll change the permissions it. or something. Strange. Um, yeah, but see, this is Thank you know you. starting to look like wow. Okay, cool. I can start looking at stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, like ad adding some kind of info box to genealogy uh, is similar to the version control tag I was thinking about, but. but yeah, uh, genealogy is, is might be well. We already have have that one, so we can use that one. Uh, right, and um, so when it comes to like the next events, and um, so we'll have a meeting with uh, Siraj probably tonight for you, but yeah, tonight for me. Um, and I'm thinking about if we will have the same our first remote session at the same time as we have the Taiwan event, uh, yeah. depending on when he thinks it's possible to have it. Uh, then we can try to do it in parallel. Or is it urgent that we try to get a Steam event up as soon as possible? Otherwise, if it's not urgent, it's probably good that we, we try to keep uh, our new schedule where we start yeah. the market for no. us. I think mm -hmm. right now is get more infrastructure up. I wouldn't call it urgent. Let's do it right. Like to try to do it. We got to perfect the curriculum. I like, get it really tight. And then uh, when we're ready with that, that's when we can. Then we can go out and actually find the instructors because they don't have to develop any curriculum. You know. Yeah. That's going to be a major deal. And the other thing is, get the if we're all in the same time zone then get the teachers like each teacher does one really good lesson and they really prepare well and it's a really tight schedule that we keep to if you miss the lesson you, you know you missed it so each one of us masters 
a lesson and they present it. So like Jessica, like maybe take on the, the plotting thing. I mean, you did pretty well at that. And then when we do the plotting session, Jessica runs it for the world. And then we switch so that the burden on each person is smaller. And then we can get, get instructors that have one eighth this skill. Jessica can't hear you. We can get instructors that have one, one eighth the skill as opposed to having all the skill. Still can't hear you. So, so the requirement on instructors, it's much, much lower. And then we can get all the instructors to happen. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it's quite a big difference in, uh, in time zones. Yeah, I so I mean, that we can't, can I like, mean, right, according to that logic, so, like, yeah, I mean, it really has to be like a bunch of events around the Asia Pacific Rim, and then a yeah. bunch of events around the US. Yeah, because I mean, this, yeah. the time zones I'm finding, like, they're not really working, like, between Europe and us, like, they're already like at the end of their day when we start, I mean, um, it's like we either collaborate I think or it's not. Been but then again, like you can, we can structure it that, okay, well, maybe we don't, we can structure it too that we don't have that collaboration like we're thinking about it right now too. But um, the whole point of the five days was that we get everybody's minds around a common problem and it really goes forward fast. That's, that's the idea towards the thing that in five days, like if there's 144 people in five days and everyone's rolling, we should get close to a product release of that whole recycling system. I mean, that would be a mark of success. Not like, oh, we just barely scratched it and then we got to come back to it the next Steam Camp and do some more and then do some more the next one. No, like get it to a really good state that it's like maybe with like another month of remote meetings, we actually put publish that as a product on our site, you know? That would be the yeah. ideal. That's the whole point that we get yeah. visible development velocity happening. Yeah. Um, all right, so I would need help with a couple of things uh, before we start looking for instructors who does the different modules. First one would be to get help in looking through this Excel uh, sheet with OSC Steam Camp Lesson Plan and see whether or not that division makes sense um, in terms of if we try to break down into one hour modules. Yeah, yeah. So, and then the first day, like once we start building, um even like when we start building the the printer, we should still get be pretty rigorous. Okay, this is where we are in the steps of, of the build steps. And then there's an explicit point. Okay, now we do quality control for that step because yeah, it was just unmanageable last time in New Zealand. Just people were all over the place and I couldn't even manage one team, you know? Because um, mm. we didn't have enough structure, I think. Yeah. Um, so we can start with this structure, like initial structure of yeah. one hour module, and then we can break it down even more. For example, in the end of the day, of day one, between 2 to 6 p.m., uh, there is, well, theoretically, four one-hour modules, but there's quite many different steps, so I don't know how long time the different yeah. modules uh, takes. Um, so I don't know who can best help with this. Who had the most uh, fluid experience of, of day one, for example, and then day two? Uh, maybe we can use the that mode too. I think the first Steam Camp where Jessica was, myself, Tom, and Don, I think w that went yeah. like kind of reasonably well. It was a long day, but that was reasonably good. But we have to take a look at, like, part of that would mean that uh, you should be able to answer that question by looking at the build manual. And if the build manual, so like, so that kind of begs the question of like. Can you build this thing or, you know, have you built it? But um, but like with the build manual, you should be we should be able to coordinate. OK, this is what the build manual says. It should be documenting like, OK, this is the amount of time it takes and it's verified and proven. So we we can have some measurability like as opposed to. Yeah, so it starts with a probably with the, like the build manual that we have is like 100 pages. And it's like maybe what needs to happen there is. Break it down into specific parts and it's like okay this is this one hour modular two hours like just just make it more manageable than right now because it looks like a big mass and it doesn't have like clear breakpoints 
you know and maybe the order is not proper like we so one is the order like the order has to be proper of which step you do first um, so I think even though the manual is complete it's kind of like probably not arranged in the best order um, it just needs refinement just just needs fine-tuning so that we can have like very predictable time blocks and steps mm -hmm. even within it um, All right, so then we instead directly go and divide into the different products and then people can focus on one part, one build manual uh, each uh, and work from there, basically. Yeah. If the build manual is the best source uh, to well, start that's, from. Well, that's one, but that's like and day one only, right? So there's three more days after that. Yeah. yeah. Now. For the experiments, yeah. like I think the best thing for you to do is like take the exact curriculum that we have and scrape the YouTube and the documentation from that event to see what exactly happened there and what we can write down, like collate both from the January and the March event. Because it's like the curriculum is kind of there, but it, like the curriculum means that we need to like really tighten it up and clean it up, get what we have already and streamline other aspects of it but you got to start with what we have already like use all the stuff that we have already which is like as far as written content probably like 50 percent of the written content is already written down somewhere and then we just need to clean out yeah that. yeah it is spread out and i found videos but the videos i found there was uh, were one list of videos that they were from 2019. um i think they were unlisted on your youtube uh, channel so do you have a list of videos which you can add me to uh, so I can review directly well, from, from the videos? Or is there, uh, See, that's going to be on a... For that, you have to go to the January 2020 do... Steam Camp page. And all the... We already have begun. So... So there's the March 2020 Steam Camp page and then there's the one the actual page for the January event which is January 2020 steam camp and in it we have like look at that like the day zero day one like all of that there are presentations already started like it's all there and then it has links to other people you and then you have to click on the participants logs on the where's the logs of the people um, <clears throat> Okay, so you don't have, there is no, no. not already on playlists with the different videos. Uh, but that, see, that's the January 2020 Steam Camp, and where's the actual working page from that? And then the first link. Yeah. So, okay, so the thing you need to do is January 2020 Steam Camp right there. And they're the first link in the links, which is the actual event. So look at so now January 2020 steam camps and you'll see everybody's log and you basically have to pick go through everybody's log and everybody has a bit of it <laughs> it's all scattered and then you will see links to their YouTube channels so it's it's all it's like I would say actually the curriculum is 50 to 75 percent written down and why didn't we have that document for March because it's in about a hundred places <laughs> it takes a bit of time to organize it um, yeah but it's it's actually there so if you go through that go through all the logs and then we did the same exact thing for for March we have the March 2020 steam camp and for the March 2020 steam camp we should have the actual links to all the participants logs there as well which I would expect at the end March 2020 Steam Camp. No, I know we don't really have it because no, we don't. Um, that's all we have. We have a couple of videos. <laughs> um, let's see, March. Like all we have is like the 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 pretty much this, and then you would go to Chris Log since Chris because the Washington event was pretty much canceled, so. 
because of the virus so it only happened like between us and New Zealand and on the East Coast but you'd go to Chris log for example there to see what he's done there and he's got content right there too look at look at all the stuff they did they um, like for example on the Raspberry Pi they did you know they documenting the case which was good work um, yeah not yeah, his log is a little lean too yeah yeah so all over the place but the best the most resource like when we did the January one that's like the most comprehensive of stuff that's been written down so this is the steam camp with all the people's logs which you can work through and then the pr previous page on top of that page which is the January 20 steam camp both pages with similar names so the January 2020 is where you're gonna have most of the a assets um, like I mean we got pretty detailed in what we have already well that and then but then you have to reconcile that with the changes that were made for for March like we streamlined some of the things kind of change it a little bit but a lot of that is still relevant yeah and there's there's just a lot of content like you see the the lesson requirement there's so we're mixing not only the there's the written content but also the parts lists and the idea that people should be able to get those kits so if we're say selling the lessons you'd have the ability to to click and order all the parts and stuff like that yeah anyway uh so there's a lot of material yeah Oh, sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Maybe refresh. Hello? Yeah, now I can hear you. Uh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yep. I can't hear you. Just a second. Okay. Right. right, yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, so, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's quite, quite spread out and quite messy. Yeah. I think that the, the people who did the different parts probably have the best uh, understanding of where the different parts are. Uh, yeah. Rather than yeah. all the different yeah. documents, yeah. different logs. But if that's, if that's what we have, then, then we'll work with that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what we do have. Because um, the idea was try to put those all that stuff into the different day documents, which happened a little bit, but not, not a lot. It's, it was... It just needs to be all tightened up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I found some. You had some videos from the June event. Uh, yeah. Yeah. New YouTube channel. Yeah. Do you have some unlisted videos also from the January or March events, which are useful? Well, those videos are like if you go to people's logs, they link to them. You can see some of the videos embedded. They're all once again all over the place. But uh, I mean, the best thing to do is. Do you, do you ever go to my channel? And yeah. then, then if you go to my channel, just look at the history around that time and you'll see everything that we did on our side. Ah, oh, you can see even the things which are not listed. Oh yeah, there's, there's a ton of stuff there, like little bits and pieces. So like, for, but, but we did like the recordings of all the day's curriculums. Yeah, they're there. Mm, okay. That's helpful. But um, they're all actually linked if you, I mean, on the January, like, uh, I'm telling you, they're on the January page too. On the January page, there's only one video, and Let's that's see. your introduction. <laughs> Let me see. Unless there's no, it's going to be, no, 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 it's going to be here, January 2020, 20, on the actual working page. 
look at this the videos are all there right there so it's hiding on you but yeah that's the wiki it's hiding on you there you see it this is on the actual oh, okay I'm, I'm not sharing my screen okay here take a look at this okay so here's january 2020 so there's a distinction between the planning page and the actual page during the event this is the page mm -hmm. during the actual event with everybody's log. So that means we're logging what happened through that event. That's just industry standard at OSC. So you, so you should expect in this to see the presentations from each day. So go to January 30, um, you know, morning session video. All the videos are here. It's all there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the one-stop shop is going to my YouTube channel, and that's, that's where everything goes in chronological order. All, All right. right, I haven't really discovered that other January page yet. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's. I started one document for myself, but maybe it's helpful for others also. I added my own chat where well, basically I post all of the wiki pages, which might be interesting. Uh, well, let me take a look at your log. So uh, let's see what you're like. If, let's comment on your log how that documents. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the right way to go. You're, you're like, okay, I can now trace whatever you're doing, and that's a good good log, yeah. No, oh, I meant the wiki log also, or like wiki. Uh, let me add it on the chats. Uh, sorry, what, what are you saying? So yeah, I meant I made one spreadsheet also with the different wiki pages. Um, so if you go into the, well, it should be in the log also, if you go down a bit, and uh, wiki overview. This one or no? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is basically for myself to, be able to find well, a different... Well, I mean, if you think this is that, useful, like publish that on a wiki, you know? Yeah. Um, it would be good, like my goal is that everyone, people also who are not, haven't been developing within Open source technology would be able to navigate this wiki quite quickly. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. But here's my suggestion. So you did that in a Google Doc, which you now have to embed. You might as well just go straight to the wiki and start a another yet another organization page. And if that page is really good, it's going to become prominent after some time. Like we'd add, we'll add it to even like the main page. You know. So that's how it works. You just. But I would rather. Yeah, instead of a doc, if, if possible, if it's e as easy, just, just do it right in a wiki because then you can do the double brackets. It's actually faster because it's already hyperlinked. Mm. Right? So, uh, for I example, in, in its own page, uh, I can do that. Yeah, so uh, for example, like that would be double bracket main page and you don't need this link. So, it's, it's actually easier to do this kind of a document right on a wiki, perhaps. Ah, uh, you mean like this? Um, yeah. When it's many columns, at least for me, it's much easier to navigate. Yeah. Now you know that you can do tables in the wiki too. Like if you set up yeah. yourself a template and all of that. Too. Um, like, I think the ideal thing would be to start relying less and then do all the formatting that's found in things like Google Docs within wiki templates. And then you do the uh, the substitute thing, and then you can actually add it that without changing the original template. But when you work with multiple columns and multiple rows, doesn't yeah. it take more time for you at least to do it in the wiki page because you have to find the different uh, places to enter your content for the different. Yeah, so. you're right about that. Like the, the tables in there are kind of, yeah, it's visually, it's not easy to add it there. Yeah. So I'm trying right. to find a good balance between wiki and, and spreadsheets. Yeah. Uh, the, the spreadsheet can pull some information, and then the wiki can like transclude in, in wiki page. Seems very useful. Um, I saw that you made a note about Kanban uh, before we yeah. end the. Yeah. If you go into my log, I have a couple of ideas or suggestions. Um, let's see. If you uh, there, no, okay. This yeah, one? yeah, this one. If you go down a bit. So yeah, this is the first good. idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually not bad. It's not as uh -huh. easy as Scrummy, because Scrummy was yeah. all automatic like that. But yeah, I th that's 
I think that's better than what we have currently with that other Kanban thing, because that other thing has got too much stuff on it. And here, like, I wouldn't want to see this. I would want to see just this page, because... Um, but you can do yeah. that if it's a single page, uh, not a presentation, but a, but a drawing. And then you can actually click on it. Then you click Edit. Let's see, is this embedded? Oh, wow. It's see, that's pretty cool, yeah. There you go, you can move it right in there. Yep. So um, one of the good parts with having the site is that you can have multiple screens as well. Uh, so you don't only get one dimension. And then you can copy it if you need more streams as well. You mean like through these pages? Yeah. So you can copy one of these pages and add it later on. Yeah. But see, that would be, like for me, that would be easier because see, there's a lot of visual noise there. So what I would like to, like, I would make this just this page here. And then upon edit, I would get the full thing. Because what you want to do is like, see like here, like now this is for time for me to get lost. Like I don't want to be having to, okay. like, you can get lost in this. So what, what we'd rather do is go to back to modularity. So just do one single one and then, think, and then yeah. create different ones for different projects. I would, I, I would do that. Rid of the uh, menu in the uh, uh, slides, but I couldn't get rid of the sidebar. But is it possible to embed an editable picture image? Do you know that? If it's possible? Uh, I don't because... know, but I think. I don't know, but I know you can do better with what we do on, for example, like critical path, like these critical paths, when you use the drawing instead of the presentation, I think it can work possibly. So like this one, see that doesn't let you do it. But what if you iframe this? No. All I know is that when you can when you when you do here, you can actually like click hyperlinks in a doc like this, same as with Google presentations. But no, I, I can check. Yeah, check it, check it, see if it works. I mean, but what you have yeah. there right there, um, yeah, that actually works better than what we have right now. If we could hide this other side. Yeah. See, that's pretty cool. Wait, you gotta be able to do that. Like there's, um, I don't know. See it was hard enough to get rid of the, uh, uh, menu. But oh, there! Look. look at that. Wait, did it? No. And if you change how you see things, I'm not sure that that would be the same for everyone else. Oh, look at that! Uh, that's that's almost doing it right there. It's kind of doing it. But I don't think it's. Uh, if you change it like this, I don't think that's that would be my view as well. So this will probably only be for you. I don't think you can share it in a certain uh, view stage or view setting. Oh, wait. So you're saying that, oh, yeah, now I can't edit it. <clears throat> so you're saying, like, if I move this thing right now, OK, try Sorry? to move it. Can, can you move something and it appears automatically or no? Uh, let's try. Oh, wow. That's even better than Scrummy, because in Scrummy, you can't, you have to hit refresh. Holy cow, that is cool. Yeah. Um, I added a few steps below also for how to do it. Um, it's basically a combination of edit and embed, and then you have to delete some of the code, and you have to add one part in the end of the HTML. OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, work. No, that's that's actually pretty cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second one is through Excel. Um, I'm becoming all Google Sheets. Sheets. Mm -hmm. And then if so, we, <clears throat> if we reduce that there, then it's actually format. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, what do we have right there? So, yeah, because with Scrummy you would have to hit refresh, and here it's even live, so that's even better. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and then the second one is a similar thing, but with uh, Google Sheet instead. I think the first one is easier to use. So here you have to add it in the queue, um, your different parts, oh, yeah. and you can add data and such. Yeah, the good no, part of yeah. it is that one of the things, one of the reasons I like Sheets is that it's very possible to make good dashboards which collect from other Google documents and provide one summary. So if you would have 20 different projects, you would be able to get one overview which collects information from the different cells, from the different documents. And that's a little bit harder to do. It's possible to do it with wiki pages because you can import XML information. Um, it's a bit harder. I'm not sure if it's possible, but at least it's harder to do it from Google Slides. Um, but for simple to do files, then that should be fine. If you um, do, <clears throat> so if you use an Excel sheet, can an Excel sheet feed information from another Excel sheet, or does it have to be yeah. within within this document? It can be to another Excel document. So, for example, what I did with the survey on the uh, product development for the COVID-19 page. Then I had I had the survey where you enter your email, your information. And then I had a Google Sheet which showed all of the information that you entered and which other people have entered except the email. Mm. Uh, so it, it created one Excel sheet with all of the information, oh. but then the second documents only take all of the other columns, but it skipped that column. No, yeah, uh, that's good. That's good. Basically. And and I'm thinking especially for you and also for me when, when there's a lot of events going on at the same time, it's quite good to have one dashboard when, where you can get yeah. kind of one overview of everything which happens. Um, so, yeah. Uh, no, that's right. That's good. That's not really possible with, with slides. At least it's outside my ability. But um, for simpler operational management, then Kanban board like this should, should be enough. Yep. All right. All right, good. Um, and in marketing, so you have consultation with this 180 degrees consultants. Yep. Uh, and when did you say that they will provide some Within their 10 product. weeks of, uh, th it's their quarter. They're on a quarter system, so it's their project for the quarter. Okay. And I'm meeting and them in half an hour. I don't know if you want to jump mm -hmm. on that too, but I'm talking to them in a half an hour. Right. Uh, what do you think? It'll be useful if you have the time, but just to, so you're fully in. But I'm going to record the session, so you can do either. Okay. Can I? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll see if I have time because I have to sleep before we have our next meeting as well. That's right. That's right. So yeah, maybe go to right. sleep for now. All right. Okay. Well, good. Good. Thank you. So yeah, we'll be in touch. Uh, yeah. so I'll talk see to you, you later. Then. Let's see. So just make sure on my calendar there. So um, I'm seeing. Yeah, midnight for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, well, see talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.